Smoked chuck roast turned into pot roast. No packet gravy. Just real simple food done the right way. If you guys want to see this, here we go. Alrighty guys, we have a bone-in chuck roast. It's from TK Riverside Ranch. So he sent me you know, like a hodgepodge back uh, box of meat, and this happened to be one of them. Not many times do we actually get a bone-in chuck roast, so super excited to do it. First things first, we got our grill working, and we need to get this seasoned. Simply enough, we're just gonna add shake that, salt, pepper, garlic, and butter. For a chuck roast, just seems like it's gonna mirror nicely together. Just a little bit more coarse black pepper. My seasoning's not necessarily black pepper heavy, but on this one, I want that. And just make sure you work around and get all the sides. And just like that, it's ready for the smoker. I've had a few questions about the Meter Pro XL. We're gonna see if it goes through that quarter inch steel. Don't know until we try. Our initial fire is dying down in the uh, smoker. So what we're gonna do is make basically like a, a charred vegetable style, intense flavor beef stock. We're gonna do set down and create a demi gloss. Here's the ingredients that we have. We have a beef shank. We have some bone with a like bone marrow, carrots, onion, celery, garlic, black peppercorns, and bay leaf. I'm not adding salt and pepper at this time because I feel like the, uh, you know, once you keep reducing and reducing and reducing, then that can intensify because you're obviously reducing. So. Very simply, rough chop, it's all gonna get strained so you don't have to worry, just make sure it's clean, but you don't have to worry about ends or anything like that. I don't know if you can see this, but I've opened my little valves on the bottom. And then I'm about to crush this fire down. It's about ready for another log. I know it doesn't seem like it. And we're gonna use this plate right here. Probably wanna keep the bones in front. It's a little cooler right there. And I don't want all that marrow to disappear on me. So it's easier for me to access if I need to. Basically what I'm gonna do is just start flipping them and turn them. We're just trying to get some smoke flavor on there, a little char. I'll show you really quick the fire. It won't be long until that breaks down. And once it breaks down, the fire will drop a little bit. So we'll put another log on there. But while it's roaring and all that uh, stuff is cooked off, this is a perfect time to do that for that flavor enhancer. All right, roughly 45 minutes later, I did end up taking that bottom shelf out and just put this closer to the fire. You guys see right here, beautiful, nice bone marrow still in there, all that smoky flavor. All righty, to the fire, we're gonna add 100% Georgia pecan wood. This comes from my uncle's uh, farm down there. So looking forward to put that on there. Oh man, let it do its thing. Good old Georgia pecan wood.
to show you a sneak peek real quick. That's about 45 minutes in as well, maybe an hour. Just to let you know that the um, the Meter Pro XL is working with this type of grill. So this is, I would say, one of the thickest grills you can get, and it's working fine. Moving right along, simply enough, we're just going to make a dark roux. You got to be careful. You cannot walk off of the roux because it will burn. We've got equal parts butter, flour. All right, our roux's done. We're gonna set this aside and start the stock. We have eight cups of water to a pot it goes. And all those vegetables and bones right to the pot. You gonna tell them what you're dealing with today? <sighs> Kidney stones. <laughs> oh about a tablespoon of black peppercorns and the show must go on <laughs> no calling in sick when you're your own boss <laughs> a few bay leaves we'll put three of them in there now we're gonna play the long game we're gonna simmer it for a few hours about an hour and a half later this is what your stock should look like we're gonna let that drain off and do its thing we're gonna get some vegetables knocked out really quick. One thing I wanna kind of mention is we've done pot roast before on a grill, smoker, however you wanna word it. And once we get to this stage, we typically wrap it up. So no, no matter if you use it like a full pan, a pan like we're gonna use, whether you put it on the stove or oven or boil it or keep smoking it, we're gonna shut down the smoker. I've already pulled the, the chuck roast off, let it kind of start calming down. I just feel like it's a waste of energy and time at this moment because you still have to go out there and tend the fire and all that stuff. So. We're gonna build ours in the same pan that we did the stock and we'll just throw it in the oven. A lot more efficient and way less worry about your times and management uh, of your fire and all that stuff. Some people boil the pot roast or the chuck roast. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm an oven guy, so that's what we're gonna do. So quickly enough, it's basically everything in the pot from here. Uh, the chuck roast smoked for? Two and a half hours. Thank you. And you're looking for kind of roughly bite sized pieces. I'm a carrot fan, so I always put more carrots in there than normal. We like the mushrooms, we're just gonna keep them whole. Whole bag of baby potatoes that we just washed. These are like the Yol, what are they called? Gold Yukons, something like that. One small can of tomato sauce. Grab yourself some red wine. It's up to you which one you want. I'm just doing this, the gauge is gonna be eight ounces as well, but it kind of cleans out that little cup for you. About a quarter teaspoon of rosemary, or a half a teaspoon rather. I'm not a huge rosemary fan, so I go light. Um, I can do it on roast, it's about as far as I go. Get a little thyme, we're gonna do about a teaspoon of thyme. Alrighty, add that stock right to it. Look at that color. My Major Pro XL worked fantastic today, so I'm excited about that. As this cooks, we'll be able to rearrange it and all that stuff. Add that au jus. My roux hardened up on me because it's so cold outside, so we just turned the skillet on here to let it warm up. And we're gonna add that roux right to it. In the oven it goes about 300 degrees for the first hour. Then we'll remove the lid and let a lot of that moisture escape and create that wonderful sauce that we're looking for. And it won't be long from now. Alrighty, we're looking about two and a half hours later. Let's see if we can take this meat out. Sometimes it falls apart. That's when you know it's tender. 
Ooh, yeah. I put those bones back in there. So all that bone marrow and stuff could like leak out of the bones and get into the stock. The braising liquid that we've got. If you're wondering why I cut the celery like that, because there's a huge rivalry in the family. And typically when there's a rivalry, the wife wins. It's funny how it's considered a rivalry. I'm throwing a hundred with her. She doesn't like celery cooked. So that means I can't have celery cooked. <laughs> so if I want it, then I gotta make sure that she dishes it out. He leaves it big so I can pick it out. <laughs> and basically I'm just taking this out because we're gonna reduce this down. And I don't necessarily want, I don't like the idea of just overcooking the vegetables to like a mush. They're done to my liking. If you guys have followed me this far, you go, you know what happens tomorrow. Vegetable beef soup with the leftovers. All right, and we have our sauce ready to go. Now, fair warning, it's completely up to you how thick you want it. I'm not just necessarily a thick kind of guy, more like a back of the spoon and wipe it off kind of guy. Um, about a quarter cup of flour equals quarter cup of uh, oil or butter. Mix it together, add it in there while it was reducing. Um, you can see right here that we got a nice consistency that I'm looking for. That's kind of like what I like. So I also added the salt and the black pepper. A little bit of that smoky flavor from the bones and the vegetables. Just adds that layer of depth of flavor. Always using your smoker or pellet grill for something more than just brisket, ribs, and butts. This is a great way to incorporate flavor. And then of course, you really do not need instructions. When you live in the South, I don't think there's anything better than cornbread. Bread and pot roast. Yeah. Oh yeah. And all that's left to do is to dig in. That or call 911. It's been a rough day. <laughs> that kidney stone's got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's been coming and going, and right now it's coming. So <laughs> I've been eating my cornbread on the side as a guilty pleasure. <laughs> Super tender. Look at that smoke ring. Mmm. The mushrooms are on point. Oh, yeah. Mm. And the carrots are my favorite. Oh, yeah. Break that sugar apart. Mmm. 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 Well, mm. all right. that's good. Time to eat. I'm finishing. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, pound the notification button to share with your friends. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Pray for us in Neil's kidney stone. <laughs> oh.